greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to the Collider Flash After Show Recap Show Review Show here on Collider Video. We are so happy you decided to join us tonight. We're talking about The Flash Season 2, Episode 3. Did anybody catch the name of the episode? Uh, yeah, it's The Family of Rogues. Family of Rogues. That's yeah. actually a really strong title. It I like is. The title. Yeah, so we're going to get into it. What are we going to do tonight? We're simply going to talk about things we loved about the episode, talk about some of the things that maybe could have been better about the episode, and we're going to take some of your Twitter questions. How do you get your Twitter questions on our show or communicate to us? Easy. Jump onto Twitter, send out a tweet, and just make sure you include the hashtag Collider Flash. That way we can see it. We've already got a couple picked up for tonight, though, and I think you're going to like them. So before we get into it, I'm going to introduce everybody at the table. We're going to start with myself. My name is John Campia. Very looking forward to tonight. Sitting over here on my left. I'm David Griffin, and nothing says a super villain like daddy issues. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Sitting over here on my right. I am John Roca, and Iris, I also have a secret from you. <laughs> and oh. sitting, I, I want to go into that more. <laughs> sitting on the end. Hey guys, Corey Takei, I'm so happy to be here again. Yes, and uh, we all, I want to let you, you all know, we all know who Gorilla Grodd is. I'm just yeah. going to let yeah. you know that. <laughs> a little bit of an inside joke that probably went over most of your heads. Okay, so <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, before we get into the things that we loved about it, uh, right off the top, Man, was I excited to see Michael Ironside. I am a huge Michael Ironside fan. Ever since going back to the days in V, of course he was in Starship Troopers. And now he also has the dubious honor of being in one of the three of the worst films in Hollywood history no. in The Highlander 2, um, which is like one of the worst films in history. But hey, how many people get can say I was in that movie? That's pretty cool. So anyway, that all being said, we're going to talk about the things that we really liked about tonight's episode. And David, let's start with you. What's on your list of the things you loved about tonight's episode? I know Flash? this is a superhero show, but I always love how human this series is too so i'm going right. to go with joe and iris's conversation over her mother being alive vanessa williams not the vanessa williams right. but a vanessa williams actress playing uh um uh iris's uh mom and i love that scene it was really well done i mean joe he when just joe's breaking it to oh, iris he did so good yeah. that's a performance i mean that's anything uh -huh. you'd see on that's any a like broadway performance oh yeah right i mean that, that, that's I mean, emmy level yeah he, he won't probably get an emmy nomination because it's the flash i mean right. you know i mean but he it was just incredible well yeah. done uh, just a beautiful moment. The fact that we're not going to get Iris being bitter at her father for the rest of the season. Yeah. Like Thank something goodness. maybe we might see. We've saw that on Arrow before where it's like, well, I'm not going to talk to you because you lied to me for all these years. She put, his, put her hand on his wrist and said, Dad, I understand. I understand why you did it. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was just such a good moment instead of them dwelling on all the you know, frustration and everything. Now, something more positive uh, I just love all the stuff going on um, back at the Team Flash headquarters, I guess, back, back at the lab. I love uh, seeing um, Jay Garrick there, even though he took a little bit of a back seat this episode. Yes, uh, I he think did. He, several characters. Several did. characters, yeah. but I thought I, I love uh, he and Caitlin's um, chemistry. I think they have very good chemistry. Uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's a little forced and a little too soon. You know, is he, is he maybe not grieving uh, enough? It's been six months. It's been six months. Yeah, I was months. thinking that exact same thing until yeah. I realized. I can't, it wasn't just one episode, right. it was six months. Right. So, yeah. right. So, that's another one of my Well, Ronnie right. can't commit to staying alive. So, <laughs> that's true. That's I mean, true. you know, he's got commitment he's, issues. And after I'm just this saying. episode, we realized we probably don't need Ronnie anymore. <laughs> that's what, uh, yeah, yeah, right. And I'm glad she's starting to move on because yeah. she yeah. deserves <clears throat> to love and be loved. So. True. Yeah. Oh, yes, true. she does. She does. True. <clears throat> and you know what? I want to I wanna build off one of the things you were talking about in your positive. That scene between Joe and Iris be, was, I'm going to tell you right now, we were watching the show and we had the. Um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. recap cast that was in the room too because they're watching the show right now as we do this. Uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I mean. And in that scene, when Joe and her having that scene, you could hear one of the cast members from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. say, man, he's awesome in the scene, but she's ruining it for me. But I have to disagree. Yeah. I think that moment for, I can't remember the name of the actress who plays Iris, but mm -hmm. I Candace think Pan. that Candace, was yeah. her finest mm -hmm. moment mm -hmm. yet in the entire series. And she could, because Joe was playing it so good yeah. that Another actress might have felt the temptation to overham it and mm -hmm. go for it, get the mm -hmm. tear. And yeah. she didn't. She played it, played it subtly. She played it the way I thought Iris would have reacted. And you are so right. I'm so glad you brought up that mm -hmm. point. I get frustrated with TV shows and movies where you know one person did something that might get the other person mad. And when they find out that other person gets mad, even though 
it was perfectly reasonable. Like yeah. you could have one here go, look, like the, the girl comes like in, where'd my ice cream cone go? Look, I'm really sorry. I was captured by time traveling dinosaurs, <laughs> taken back to the Roman Empire, sold as a slave and a gladiator. I had to fight my way through the, the American Civil Revolution, whatever it was, and got back up, but I hadn't eaten in 17 days. I was about to die. I saw the ice cream cone and I had to eat it. I'm really sorry. You ate my ice cream cone. Like, that's what they normally do yeah. in these shows, right? right? And I was so, I thought for sure that's what they're going to do with Iris. Dad, how could you lie to me? Even though he just explained it all mm. so well. Yeah. And her reaction was perfect. Oh, yeah. It was emotional and sad, but not hammy. And <clears throat> bravo. And again, yeah. it keeps coming back. Here's the problem, though. Uh, the actor who plays Joe. Uh, yeah, Jesse L. Martin. Jesse L. Mm -hmm. Here's the problem with Jesse L. Martin, okay? He's so good yeah, yeah. that sometimes he sticks out a little too yeah. much. Yeah. Like he it, delivers, it was in that scene. It was his yeah. performance in that phenomenal. scene, mm -hmm. that is a dramatic motion picture performance yeah. quality Absolutely. level. In, I love this TV show, but yeah. in a show that does not you know, carry that level of mm -hmm. performance, right. and he's so good that it almost sticks out. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. uh, Mr. Roca, what yes. about you? Some of the things you loved about well, the episode. Well, I, I agree with everything you just said, David. Everything you just said, John, absolutely. Jesse, I was fantastic in that scene. And this is this is a great point. If you give an, a good actress good material, they will shine. Candace Patton, we've been dying. Mm -hmm. Last season, we died mm -hmm. with her character because she was so boring. They were giving her kind of boring storylines to, to go through. And you irritating get, sometimes. And irritating, yes. Yeah. So you give her something she can really act, and she kills it. And yeah. that's not a coincidence. A good actress can kill that scene, and she did it really, really well. So I was happy about that. My favorite parts of the show, the things I loved about the show, I love Captain Cold. I always love when Captain Cold is on. Too. They have love great dynamic. I know Captain Cold is supposed to be essential his Joker and that's why you love their interaction their back and forth and then you got into the deep deeper issues underlying between uh, uh, Leonard his dad and him and then his sister uh, and so all of that that was explored was fun to explore because I think what we're seeing in this season is flashes going dark 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 and they're really like answering maybe some of the critics from last season who said it was a little too light or didn't really approach the issues in a realistic way they're bringing these issues out <laughs> and they're exploring them and having consequences and repercussions of these things coming up. So to me, it in, it's enriching the show even more. Barry threatened him at the end. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. kind of said, oh, I know your weakness now. Yeah. Well, I, know yeah. you love, I know you do anything yeah. for your sister. I'm like, that's a threat. Right. That's a threat. He's going to use that on him sometimes. And he killed his own dad. He committed patricide right. yeah. on yeah. a CW show. Well, his dad's an asshole. Well, right. <laughs> and Barry just kind of watched. Barry just kind of watched. He's like, yeah, yeah. Barry, Barry yeah, let like, it happen. Now, no, 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 in, in Barry's defense, it's, <laughs> it's not like... Please defend the Flash, yes. <laughs> Barry, I'm about to shoot my dad. <laughs> like, he just kind of did on the the moment. He didn't catch a bullet. I think he can catch some frozen stuff coming out of the yeah. I'm getting onto on building off yep. where you're talking about uh, with Iris. You know, a lot of people coming out of season one, Iris, by a lot of people, yeah. were never by me, granted, but I saw where they were coming from. A lot of people said she is the Laurel Lance of Flash. No. I, uh, no, I heard well, it. People were saying that. Right? I, mean, yeah, I, I saw that all it. over the place, yeah, right? I agreed. And while I never thought it was, it was that bad, I, I, I could see where they're coming from because mm -hmm. they didn't quite, they weren't quite sure what to do with her yeah. in the show, right? This season, totally different yep. story. Yep. It's like during the off season, they said, you know what? This is who Iris is going to be. This is the role she's going to yep. play. And this is how we're gonna use her. And ever since they started doing that, you're right. They've given her material now where the actress herself is starting to shine. Yeah. She is no longer the weak link. And now she feels like an integral part of the show to me. Right. So yeah, I think you raise an excellent point there. I completely agree with you. Well, it's interesting to see how the dynamic's going to work with mm -hmm. Panna Baker now, because they're going to have to give her more to do too, because they're kind of making her the love sick girl. Yeah. It's like, well, is she really, she needs to do more. Panna Baker yeah. is capable of doing more. Mm -hmm. So now she's going to stick out a little bit because they're taking care of the Iris problem. So and we'll you know, see. just to piggyback on the Iris situation, the fact that she responded to her father hiding that secret for so long in such a mature manner, yeah. that just shows she ain't Laurel Lance. All yeah. Right? Yeah. She don't yeah. Love yeah. <laughs> so that was cool. Um, what are some of the other things that really stand out to you that you loved about this episode? Um, I, I just, in general, I liked watching the development of every kind of relationship. You saw Garrick and Caitlin and Caitlin's crush on Garrick and then him kind of responding, but letting everyone know she's not my priority. I still mm -hmm. gotta, you know, go get Zoom. And then Lisa and Cisco. That was tight. Cisco got his moment. I yeah. love Cisco. Yeah. He, yeah. he, he every deserves Every episode. It. I just follow him. I just love that dude more and more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and um, 
again the relationship of iris and joe i thought that was just phenomenal mm. i gotta say it for the fourth time that was really <laughs> just really good um and um yeah I also like the parallel between the fathers where you have Joe who is a good father mm. and he has yeah. Iris as well mm. yeah. as Barry versus the dickhead dad <laughs> who eventually his son has to kill him to right. protect his sister. It takes you all to believe them. Like even, <laughs> you know, when you have your name, right? Linda, Lisa. Yeah. You have Lisa uh, Golden Glider do it, telling the story. You kind of like, do you, they've been double crossed so many times. You mm. almost don't buy yes. it. Right. But then in the end, it's true, and she's actually, I mean, for the most part, honest. I mean, even Cisco at the end said, hey, was any of that true? And she kind of just gave him a little smile, so we don't know how. But, I mean, still, like, yeah. you do believe her this time. Well, she, he saved her. It was like a damsel yeah, in distress right. in mm -hmm. some kind of way. And, and I love how she even said, look, I don't like being vulnerable. I don't like looking weak. And that was a really great moment for Cisco. That was a great moment for the character. And, look, Michael Ironside was used as a villain of the week. Yeah. He, he was absolutely was. But the whole purpose of having that as a villain of the week, and I think this is a great positive of this episode, was they used that as a catalyst to expand more on the character of Captain Cold. Yep. Uh -huh. And they they have such, man, I'm telling you, the dynamic between him and Flash. So now, good. I'm just getting so disappointed good. when there's an episode that he's not in. You're right. <laughs> you know, I, yeah. I at first, you know, I told I said this before in a previous episode in season one, I'm like, at first I'm like, this dude's so cornball. I mean, this <laughs> character, I'm Captain Cole. It's like, what? Yeah. Is he, he's wearing a parka? It's still sunny outside. <laughs> like, and he has become, uh, to me, a pillar of the show. Yeah. And to see where they're going, obviously a little bit uh, alluding to where Legends of Tomorrow yeah. is going to come into play, obviously. So that's cool. I really love that aspect as well. I do like Caitlin not knowing how to handle having a little crush. Yeah. Because, number one, she hasn't dated a lot, even before Ronnie's. They already explained that a lot. And then this is the first time she's mm -hmm. tried to be romantic with anybody since Ronnie, you know, died or just went to Earth 2, sucked through the vortex, and we and he's actually still alive and still there. Yeah. Who knows where they're going with that. But I thought that was a really pleasant thing. Although, she's flirting with him. It's like, the only thing she's not doing now is just taking her shirt off. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was getting... It was not subtle at all. It was so not obvious. Not subtle at right. all. But, but that, I thought, was consistent because... Yeah. Mm -hmm. She doesn't know how to handle this situation. Right. I, I'd be in the same situation. I don't know how to handle men myself. <laughs> like, 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 remember last season? I've seen you with men. You're right. I, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> well, like, remember last season when uh, Barry took her home after the karaoke night? She was yeah, wasted, yeah. and he got a little peek, and he's like, oh, you, you deserve it. You know, that you guy. Deserve, yeah, you deserve, deserve it. it. Okay. And they're great science. They're, that's, that makes sense for the characters, because they're science nerds. That's what they're going to do. Like Cisco yeah. going... Put down that magnet. You know, they all have this kind of these moments that are kind of weirdly sort of out of place or not the right reaction, normal reaction, but it endears us to them, right? In yeah. the way that they're quirky in their way. She was so yeah. cute fumbling around with him and everyone else is kind of doing their hiding their smirk and he knows what's going on. He's at, Jay Garrick. At least like, he's responsive to but it. Yeah, he's responsive to it. He needed to go to shave it. even though he looked like he was already shaved. I, right, right. Okay, <laughs> I needed to shave. Dude, you shaved five minutes ago. I can see my reflection <laughs> off your cheek. Like, Give me a break. I need to go get a shave. <laughs> He's a man's man. We're watching, we were watching the show, and he said that. I'm like, what? Your balls? I mean, that's the only thing you could possibly be talking about because... Got to cut down that resistance, you know? Hey, yeah. 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 Woo! Hi -oh. <laughs> anyway, okay. I, needless to say, I thought the episode was really entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. It was not Very my fun. favorite episode of the season, but not every episode has to just go build, 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 build. Like, I thought yeah. it was a really mm -hmm. satisfying, entertaining episode. Yeah. Some nice emotional element, some fun element, some really cool elements with uh, cold. Yeah, sorry, I just want to mention because the, the suit. We got to see yeah. what the new the emblem's yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah. Get that heat in there right. and melting That's the ice. Cool. That was really cool. That was a fun scene. And you know, at, at first I thought, oh, come on. But then I realized, you know what? Cisco, no. Well, to Cisco, the biggest threat out there is Captain Cold. Yeah. Yeah. And it and he has been imprisoner of Captain Cold. It kind of makes sense mm. that what would be the first thing that Cisco would build into yeah. that suit? Yeah. A defense against the, the, the cold gun. Yeah. Right? Ahead. So while I thought at first, oh, come on. Then I went, no, wait a minute. I find that happens a lot with this stupid show. <laughs> I find sometimes this is, your, this is your way of saying if you love it. Well, I know yeah, that's what is. you're doing. It's, it's like, the, I don't know how many times that I've gone, something happens on screen and I go, oh, come on, that's stupid. And then I think about it for a minute. It's like, no, no, they're right. No, yeah. they're right. That was the right thing to do. And I find that happens a lot with this show, which right. is actually kind of fun. It keeps on your toes. All right, but not everything is perfect. Sure. So. Mm -hmm. Let's go back around. Carrie, I'm going to start over with you. Sure. What were maybe some of the things about tonight's episode 
that didn't work for you? Well, surprisingly, even though I was talking about how I like the development of all the relationships, the one that didn't work for me was Patty yeah. and Barry. It just kind of fell flat compared to last Patty week. Patty Pivot? You, you talking about yeah. Patty Pivot? Spivot. I'm not talking about her. I'm talking about the relationship. Like the, the chemistry didn't work for me in this particular episode. I got it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, she, she, was, she, was, she was rocking that low cut top. I Listen, mean, she yeah. had that, we were joking, that she had that one shirt on the crime scene. Like, it was yeah. open down to her belly. That's button. not police regulation. Yeah. Oh, that yeah, is you, not yeah, just, you, you just, 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 mm. just for me, <laughs> this episode, she wasn't really necessary. It just felt like time filler. That's just, mm. it didn't work for me in this particular episode. You know what? I'm going to agree with you. Well, I, I do not dislike the character yet. Yeah. I'm not loving the character yet, but I'm not disliking the character yet either. But I'm, it's the, that chemistry they're trying to create on mm. screen mm. for me is not working. I'm not. I'm not feeling it at all. Um, and I don't have like. It, speaking of Lumford, I mean, they brought back Linda. Linda popped back yeah. up today just yep. for a scene, but she's back. Yeah. And I thought her and Barry did have chemistry. Well, she did tweet out that she is um, going to be back more frequently. Yeah. So. So I mean, so maybe things go. But I, I see where they're going with the Patty thing. They created a nice on paper match for Barry because of her scientific background. Apparently, mm -hmm. in this universe, everybody has five science degrees. <laughs> but it, but it's. I gotta admit, it's not working for me. I feel. I just wow. don't feel it at all. Those scenes are just coming across as a little clumsy to me, to mm -hmm. be honest. So far, okay. yeah. but we'll see, we'll see how that develops. Yeah. What are some things that didn't work for you in this episode? Well, you know, I, I can't. I can't agree. I, I love their cute chemistry. I, <laughs> what can I say? They're conf they're fumbling around with each other and figuring each other out. So I like that. But. But I, I but it for sounds me, like you just described the first time they were having sex. That's happening to young, to young people. <laughs> young people don't know what they're doing. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I w the thing that did work for me, and, and I don't want to get too serious, but I really didn't like the fact that the backstory with Francine uh, Iris's mom was that she was a drug addict. They're an African American character, and I think it plays a little too much into a stereotype of that. Mm -hmm. I think they could have come up with a more inventive reason, a more intelligent reason to have her disappear, or some other reason that have her disappear that wasn't like her being a crack addict on the couch I just felt for me it just bothered me as a minority to watch that again mm -hmm. in this they're the only black family on the show and you're gonna throw that uh, that um, thing on them and so it just bothered me a little bit and that's the only thing I found negative I think there could have been another way they played it uh, that would have just been just as powerful to have her disappear or any number of reasons like she could have run off with somebody else she could have been an irresponsible young person that got into some trouble and decided to go off with somebody else and leave Joe with her you know there was a number of things they could have done so that, that was the only thing that uh, you know that I had a problem with um, I, I gotta disagree with you on that okay. I, I didn't think any sort of racial tones in there to me it fit with the story because you have to have an issue that would one make Joe not want to see her mm -hmm. Joe think it would be best because remember Joe is like he is the ultimate Mount Rushmore man in this show yeah he's the ultimate man in the show as far as family responsibility morals ethics North Star that sort of thing mm -hmm. so you got to think of something like if she ran off with another man at some point though a guy like Joe is like my daughter still needs her mother mm -hmm. and well I'm at her so you needed a device that said why Joe can't have anything to do with her why Joe thinks it's just best for his daughter to think that she's dead right. um, at this point, all that, all that other kind of stuff. So personally to me, I, I didn't feel that it, I thought it was the right plot device to use. And regardless of what ethnicity that couple happened to be, mm -hmm. I don't think you, sat, you sacrifice the right plot device if it's applicable. And I might think more like you on this, mm -hmm. if it wasn't for the fact that the other half of that relationship, which is Joe, yeah is portrayed as the ultimate man. I mean, right. who takes in mm -hmm. wayward mm -hmm. kids, who's the constant North Star for everybody, right. morally, ethically, um, all that kind of stuff. So I, I personally didn't feel that. Maybe if I watch the episode again, I will. Well, you know, well so. it's a minor, I, I don't know, maybe as a because I am a minority, I look at that kind of stuff a little more yeah. Uh, with a little more of an eye for myself personally. So no, that's, I mean that's it, the it's only fair. Thing. The C, not to that's criticize the, the CW as a whole, but now, I haven't seen Jane the Virgin, so I can't speak to that show. But they right. don't <laughs> they don't do the best job when it comes to portraying minorities. Yeah, sometimes it's not the wire. Right. We're never gonna. I, I, I think they get, maybe they're getting better. I haven't seen Jane the Virgin. I can't speak to that. But it is that's like a good show. When you, Jane the Virgin, a CW show. Yeah. yeah. Yes, oh, I but I mean, usually when you see like gangsters show. or either Hispanic or black guys like this, and they all like, yeah, like we gangsters, man. You know, it's like that's a gangster. It's like not really. Well, like, it's the first know, time this, this show has done that. So right. that's why so, I was yeah. surprised. Well, as, by it. as a minority, it didn't cross my mind at okay. all that you know. Yeah. It, no, it's an interesting perspective. Yeah. Yeah, but it is a very interesting perspective. But that being said, I think that the drug thing, like John was mentioning, it just fits perfectly because. 
obviously she wants to get back in his life and her mm-hmm. daughter's life and the father does not trust her so i mean it just it, mm. it was a safe plot device as a cop wouldn't he have like explored how to get her out of it put her into rehab stood he, by he, like wouldn't he allow her he did, her. Though. He, did. Then, he put her into rehab okay. yeah. for a second time yeah. and then mm-hmm. and then, then she, she disappeared mm-hmm. he looked for her like he explained okay. all this. he right. looked for her and all but that kind he, of stuff but then eventually <clears throat> he just decided to kill her off yeah it was, okay. it was best for his daughter well, he and said he did the best he could looking for her but because she was the wife of a cop she knew how to disappear she knew how to disappear and all that kind of stuff so they they seem to cover their bases on that for me um the one thing i'll say this though is since you know how to how to portray minorities in the show I will say this for most CW shows and I don't watch a lot of them I watch Supernatural which is actually my favorite show on TV right yeah. now Supernatural Flash um, what else have I watched in the CW I can't really think out the Arrow? top of my head no? uh, I have watched Arrow okay. yes <laughs> and Pass here's sense. the thing <laughs> CW doesn't seem to know how to portray any ethnicities like mm. everybody is the same. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yes. They're Which is Asian, good. Yes. white, That's good. black, German, Russian. Right. Russians, they portray a little differently. That seems to be the only I one. Like but Russian. aside, that, especially in Arrow, they, yeah. they seem to portray the Russians a little bit differently. But I just feel like... CW plays it very safe, yeah. and it's, mm-hmm. I'm not, that's not a criticism because it's working yeah. for them. But they seem to play it very, very safe where... Every, the bunch of people in these shows, their skin might be different, but everybody is the same. Yeah. They're and kind of whitewashed, I would yeah. have to say. It, it really is. Which is so. okay, because that keeps everybody at the same... Yeah. Because everybody's yeah. equal. Yeah. Really, listen, if thing. we all went on a road trip together, all four, we hung out for a month straight, there would be yep. at some point a conversation we would have concerning race, whether it's a right. joke or a... Uh, Why are you letting the white guy yeah, drive? Or, or, or we turn off the lights like David... <laughs> or, yeah, or, yeah, or the Asian girl drives. Right, right, right. Right. Don't yeah. let her drive, man. Or, or, or like, you, like you turn off the light switch, like David yeah. always sees your eyes and your teeth. Where'd you go? You know, something something like that. I mean, you know, it's going to happen. CW Hello. ignores it, which is fine. <laughs> We've opened We're the door now. We're going to open the back in, John. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah, back yeah, in, we'll John. Ah, uh, right. yeah. So let me go off one of my negatives, then. And it was a moment. But I thought it was a little bit of an inconsistent moment. There's the, the the big scene, of course, where um, Michael Ironside shoots Barry. Oh yeah. And mm-hmm. I I thought at first that he did shoot him, but I thought, okay, caught him in the shoulder the way he spun, so he's gonna super heal in a bit, and and he'll be okay and he'll be fine. But they did it where he caught the bullet, and here's here's my problem. Barry can't catch bullets. Barry's fast. Barry doesn't have titanium skin. So when he goes, Phew, okay, he's fast enough to get his hand on the bullet. But then guess what would happen? The bolt would continue to move and rip through his flesh on his hand. So I'm like, uh, that doesn't quite work, but whatever, it's TV. So <laughs> I, we, we let that go. Who cares? It doesn't really matter. Um, I honestly really can't think of anything else in the episode. I mean, yeah, that the relationship between um, Patty and Barry, not clicking for me. But at the same time, it's not like it was, oh, God, this right. is painful yeah. to watch. It yeah. wasn't like it that. Wasn't like that. Yeah. It's just that. For me, it's just sputtering a bit, but it's not really a big nail. Man, I I can't yeah. really think of anything. That's, Bullet that catching thing. relationship mm-hmm. thing a little bit. Well, uh, what about you, David? I'm a little, this is more of a concern. It hasn't happened yet. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, we saw this on Arrow with the cast getting too big. Yep. Okay. Now, granted, we do have Legends of Tomorrow coming out, so hopefully that will move some characters over there to create some space. But one thing we haven't talked about tonight, and I think it's just because there's just always so much going on, there's so many characters, is uh, what happened with uh, Professor Stein. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know he's oh, yeah. kind of freaking out at the end. You know he's kind of turning back, turning you know with the fire, the blue yeah. flame, blue and the red flame, without even having Ronnie with him. Right. So I mean, I think there's always so much going on. I hope it's a concern, not a problem. I hope the show doesn't get so big with all of his characters that we start losing track of people. It's hard to balance. Even Game of Thrones struggles with yeah. that. It's really yeah. hard. Yeah. What to do you mean, even Game of Thrones? I mean, Game of Thrones is the <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I know. I'm putting that last like, wait, wait up here. But I mean, I'm saying it, it's difficult to do. You can go three do. episodes without seeing your favorite <laughs> exactly. character exactly. in Game of Thrones. It, it, it's yeah. really difficult to do. So, but John mentioned it earlier. Like some characters took a back seat this right. time, and that's what's going to have to happen. It's the mm-hmm. constant moving back and forth. It didn't hurt this episode. At no, all. I don't, not no, at all. No, and they do it well. The showrunners of the show do it so well because even though they are introducing more characters, and sometimes some characters take a backseat, Barry is always front and center. Yeah. And they don't lose sight of that. And I, I think that's why the show continues to work and why they can take more bold risks by adding more characters because as long as you keep Barry as that anchor, keep him front and center, you can bring in a Jay Garrick and then move him to the back seat for an episode or two. Right. You can bring in a, a, a Captain Cold and even have him not there for two or three episodes. You can do that because you have such a strong anchor. Yeah. And as long as they continue to do that, I think they're going to be fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, any other thoughts about tonight's show? Positives you forgot about? I mean, negatives you forgot about? I, I, I do wish that I got to see more of 
what Iris's mom was all about. That's something that I guess we're going to see in development, but she's kind of a mysterious character for me, and I think she's going to play a more important role. So yeah. <laughs> that kind of bothered me. I'll, I'll be honest. I'll be perfectly happy if we never see her again. Really? I'll be perfectly happy again if that was all just to set up that scene <laughs> between Aww. Joe and Iris. And then now you just never see her again. Iris can say, I met with mom over coffee. I'm going to, you know, I don't know how I feel about it. I'll meet with her again. And then we just never actually see her. That's all off screen. I'd be more than happy. What if she's working with Wells? I, just, I read a fan theory that people think that she might be uh, her mother from Earth 2. Mm -hmm. Coming over as a villain from with Wells oh. to yeah, infiltrate, people are saying she's and that's because she that didn't awesome. come until the breach. Right, yeah. she didn't come until the breach, and I, I was. And she looks put together for a ex druggie. Yeah, I mean she got she might have got well, her life cleaned changed. up. She might have got her life cleaned up. She's changed. She's, she's changed. A, come a long way from New Jack right. City. <laughs> right. She's uh, she's doing well. All right, folks. Well, listen, I said we were going to take some of your Twitter questions, and we're going to do that right now. Once again, you can fire Twitter questions off. Just send out a tweet and include the hashtag Collider Flash. So let's get to the hashtags here. What's the first one we got? This one comes from Alex. And Alex writes, with a Flash movie in 2018, does that limit how many seasons we're going to get? Because it has to end before the movie comes out. Well, um, so basically, the, the assumption here, here's... There's an error in your assumption. The error in your assumption is you can't have the TV show going while the movie's going. Right. Yes, you can. Just to be really clear, DC has made this abundantly clear. Their television universe and their movie universe are completely separate things. This isn't like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. with the Marvel Cinematic Universe where they're, they're in the same universe. Totally different. The Arrow and Flash do not exist in the world of Man of Steel and Batman vs. Superman. They're different universes, they're different realities, they do not cross over, they, one does not affect the other whatsoever. So you are, I think if things keep going well for The Flash, you're gonna see The Flash still going into seasons five, six, mm -hmm. and seven, mm -hmm. while there's a different Flash in the movies telling different stories, and it's gonna be just fine. So, nope, they don't have to end The Flash before the movie comes out. They're going to be just fine. How do you guys see it? I feel the uh, same way. And I think that's a good thing. It gives the show room to breathe. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Agents yeah, yeah. of S.H.I.E.L.D. after uh, Thor Dark World came out, it's like, oh, let's go to London. What happened here? Oh, yeah. Thor was here. we got to pick some of this stuff up. What happened here? I got to say, like, it just it feels so forced. Like, they, they yeah. have to acknowledge that the Marvel movies just happened. Yeah. It's like, yeah. watch yeah. this episode before you go see the movie opening weekend so you can tie everything in. I like that these shows can breathe. They can do what they want to do without worrying about what's going on in the movies. Yeah, and the practical nature of it if the show is successful they're not going to cancel it if no, they're they they still bringing in money and people are watching in high numbers within the right demographics they're not going to cancel the show and they're not it's not like a grand gustin is going into the movie to be right. flash they recast the flash therefore that's a whole other unit yeah, ezra miller ezra, ezra miller is right. going to be the flash. Flash. so that doesn't make it to, i don't see any way that they would cancel the show other than bad ratings that would be the only reason to cancel do you it, see there think. being a problem with there being a movie flash and tv flash absolutely not i think we can totally separate between the movie verse and and the TV verse, yeah. and they're obviously two different flashes. And you know, if Flash is as good as it is now, it's going to continue for a long time. Like Supernatural, it's going to last forever. <laughs> <laughs> Eleven seasons, Supernatural. <laughs> All right, what's next? Okay, this one comes from Poppy Smirnoff. I love the name. <laughs> when do you think we will see Wally West? And do you think we will see Gorilla Grodd again this season? Well, um, who? Who's Gorilla Grodd? He's that gorilla. <laughs> um, well, getting to, uh, you know what? Now I, I forget the question. What's the question? Where's Is Wally, Wally West? West? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, in the, in the little tag at the end of the show when they show you a little glimpse as to what's coming up next week, we already know that Wally West was cast, mm -hmm. and we see, I believe it was that actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was he was doing him. the Firestorm thing. And yeah. it looks mm -hmm. like Wally, it's, they're doing something different with Wally West. Yeah, that's great. Wally West in this mm -hmm. TV universe is not going to be a Flash. He's not going to be a speedster. He looks like he's going to be uh, the professor's new Ronnie, mm -hmm. his new life partner. Yeah. Um, life so, partner. I mean, uh, so oh. that's an interesting. Ooh. Well, I mean, yeah. I think it's, it's an interesting oh, yeah. twist yeah. Yeah. there that now he's found somebody else that he can merge with and become. Um, Firestorm, and I think that's pretty cool. So we're going to see that. Gorilla Grot app, I got no doubt we'll see him again. Yeah. Uh, I think ultimately, look, Grodd is just getting smarter. And they are at some point, he's going to be the ultimate foil for Flash. I hope to see him again. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think we're going to see him, but I think we're probably going to see him for an episode or two this season. 
And then they might save him for even bigger things next season where he'll become the threat of the season. Um, Because as he gets smarter and he's he's developing his abilities more, he's going to become more and more of a threat and more and more of a danger. I'm so looking for... I loved in the first episode when they called back, something big strangled him. It wasn't... No, this one wasn't Grog. (laughs) I love that scene. That was so great. But I mean, what what do you think about this whole... Wait, no, Wally West isn't going to be a Flash? But I think because we have all these alternate Earths now, we could see a version of Wally West that is the Flash. Maybe not on the main show, but mm. like coming in, maybe in Jay Garrick's world, maybe another Earth. You know, we're going to see Wally West and as Earth the three, Earth, Earth three. Four. Yeah, right. but uh, for right now, I think that's cool, though. I like how they mix things up. Because, you know, again, mm-hmm. we always say when we do this show, this is not a comic book recap right. show. We're not judging this necessarily on the comic books. The comic books are their own separate entity. They have their own stories. This is telling its own mythology, its own story. So in this case, Wally West could become Firestorm. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Because it's yeah. something different. How I, do you guys see it? I mean, I still think he might become a speedster for sure, even though we saw that he's kind of intertwined with uh, Stein. But I don't know. I, I think that he's going to have a certain power that's going to kind of interlap there with his so, yeah, uh, and if I remember in the comic books, <clears throat> this if and it, it, for those of you who are really uh, well read on the comic books, I think this actually happened for a for a run of the comic books that Wally West merged with Firestorm, with Firestorm. I did to not help know him that. with something. I think now if I'm wrong, you can tear me apart on the comments, but I feel like yeah, I feel like that happened. <laughs> so it's and it's a great way to bring him into their world, which and of course, David, we talked about last week and then this week again. Too many characters, right. but it's a way we know that Legends of Tomorrow is going to happen. So Stein going to be moved out and so's uh, oh sorry so's uh, so's well, uh, Captain we, Cold. we haven't seen but, Wally West in those tra- trailers for Legends of Tomorrow so right. maybe he will stay he will he's going to yeah. stay I yeah. think he's going to stay so yeah. I think this is a way to bring him into the world and then eventually he will become a speedster at some point right. and then we'll see from there because then Garrick's got to go at some point as well right. and so that'll be and Grodd we're definitely getting him and if you want, like if you look through his seasons of TV shows they especially on the CW with these kinds of shows they'll have these kinds of episodes that are that are building the groundwork laying the groundwork and enriching the character character storylines so that they can bring Grodd in and have this awesome episode. Yeah, payoff episode. So it's definitely, he's coming back. All right, last question of the night. And this one has the honor of going to uh, uh, Cuban Superman. (laughs) (laughs) Jesus. I I, I saw Jesus. What? Cuban (laughs) Superman. That's awesome. Okay, so what do you guys think Harrison Wells, what do you guys think of Harrison Wells coming through the portal at the end means? I'm hoping he is in Zoom. It would be so lame. Um, Here's the thing. (laughs) The first time we got a glimpse of Wells was was in the alternate Earth. And he comes through the door and he looks kind of almost like he looks bad. And then we see him come through this portal. He's got the look on us like he's bad. All misdirection. This Harrison Wells, I believe, and I'm not basing this on anything. Okay, This is just my assumption. I believe he is just Harrison Wells, the brilliant scientist from that universe. I think he discovered these ripples, these rips in in the realities. And I think being the adventurous kind of scientific explorer that he is, he wanted to go through and see what's on the other side. I think this Harrison Wells is a good guy. I do. Hmm. I think these, these looks on his face, I think these are all misdirections being thrown at us by the producers of the show. I'm excited to see how Barry reacts. Yeah. To coming face to face with a different Harrison Wells. I mean, so I that to me is going to be really cool. What do you think, Roger? Uh, I think also Cisco is going to be quite interested to see Harrison oh, again. Yeah, I right. think about that, yeah. that too as well. Um, but I don't know if I agree with you 100%, John. There's certainly that can happen. And so if it happens, great. Um, but I think you need the reverse flash. I think you need that in the Flash world, and people loved it so much last season, they're taking their time maybe building towards it, if it's going to happen. But if he's a good guy that ends up becoming essential for the show, because the show really worked a lot last season with him coordinating their uh, their superhero missions, yeah. coordinating this kind of stuff, so it wouldn't be bad to bring him back, especially if Garrick is, is, is keep saying, I'm going back through this portal at some point. He's going to need someone else to be guiding him through the superhero I, world. I, I mean, the interesting thing about him is that even if he is, let's say, a good guy and maybe yep. Barry ends up you know, believing him, us as viewers are not going to 100% believe yeah, he's a true. good guy. That's true. That's and great. That, I think that's yeah. on purpose. Yeah. yeah. It's now, I'm, us out. I'm still believing Zoom because you're worried about him. I, don't, I do not no. think he's Zoom. I remember Harrison Wells wasn't the reverse Flash. He bought Thawne was the reverse right, Flash. Right. But I still think... Barry from Earth 3, Earth 4, Earth 5. I still think Barry is Zoom. Mm. Um, or Barry from Earth 2 yeah. is mm-hmm. is Zoom because um, Jay Garrick doesn't know Barry in his world. So maybe Barry right. is Zoom from, from Earth 2. I'm still thinking that's the case. And I think 
the the appearance of Harrison Wells is to be like a little misdirection for us to look away as they're dangling hints in front of us of, as to what he, who he really is. But I don't know. Did anything, Joe? How, how would, did you guys react to Wells coming through that portal? I, I love it. I want to see more of Wells. It's yeah. a shame that we only get 30 seconds or less of him. Because I love him as an actor. Yeah. Yeah. Tom Cavanaugh. Tom, Tom Cavanaugh. Yeah. Good yeah. Canadian boy, by the way. Um, <laughs> there's, there's a great Labatt Blue commercial he's on. If you yes. go on YouTube, look it up. It's hilarious. Once yes, there is, yeah. as a matter of fact. <laughs> um, yeah. All right, folks. That'll do it for us for this installment of the Flash Recap and Review Show here on Collider Video. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, once again, don't forget, tweet to us anytime. Just hop on Twitter, send out a tweet, and include the hashtag CollidorFlash, and we will see it. I want to thank the people sitting at the table with me. First of all, sitting over here on my left, David, where can people find you online? You can find me on Twitter, at GriffinDE. Uh, also here every Tuesday, of course, and I will be on Movie Talk, Collider Movie Talk, this Friday, Yay. 23rd. Sitting over here on my right, Mr. John Roca. Hey, Roca, everybody. Where can you, find you? You can find me on Twitter or Instagram, at the Roca Says, uh, as you see right there. Um, and uh, you can find me here on Tuesday. And then also on Sunday nights, uh, being one of the hosts for The Walking Dead recap show, which was awesome. Which so, we just started. We just yes. started. So, and we went live last week, so we'll see how the second episode goes. I'm having a blast. Yes. And, of course, on the end there, Miss Corey Takei. Corey, where can people find you? You can find me right down there at Corey's, K-A-O-R-I-O-U-S. And join us every week right here for The Flash, as well as Roka and I at uh, The Walking Dead every Sunday. Did I say your last name right? Yes. Yeah. And also, you have, starting Monday, oh. you have oh. a new recap show starting. Supergirl! Yeah. What's up? Supergirl. <laughs> so that one starts up on Monday. And uh, you guys can find me Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday on, uh, on Movie Talk. You can find me on Tuesdays on Collider Heroes, on Thursdays on Collider Jedi Council. On Wednesdays, you can find me on our Rebels recap show. On Tuesdays, you can find me here on the Flash recap show. Uh, do I do any other recap shows? No, those are the other two. Do. <laughs> on Saturdays and Sunday, you can find me on Mailbag, and you can follow me on Twitter and on Facebook, simply at John Campia. So that will do it for us here, guys, for the Collider Flash recap show. Thanks so much for joining us, and until next time, may the Speed Force be with you.